Today I want to go over um, some sheath making. Um, I get quite a few questions and I'm by no means an expert at sheath making, but I've learned a couple of different ways that I like. Um, there's probably hundreds of ways to make a sheath. Um, I'm going to show you one of those ways now. Uh, it's something I call a, a no welt sheath. Um, as some of you probably know, a welt is if you have two pieces of leather that are going to be your sheath, it's another piece of a leather inserted here, and that's so when the stitching is done in this area, the leather will keep, that extra piece of leather or the welt will keep uh, the blade from cutting your threads on your sheath. So I'm going to show you a way to do that without putting that welt in. It just keeps it a little bit thinner. Now I'm using reasonably thick leather here. So I just like working with it. I think it makes a sturdier sheath. So when I do that, especially on a smaller knife like this one, um, I don't want to make the sheath thicker than I have to. I can always use thinner leather. Um, and again, there's a lot of ways to make a sheath. One thing when I'm making a knife, the last thing I do, and it's after the sheath is made and all that, is sharpen it. So this is not sharp. It's pointy, but it's not sharp. So I'll show you how I do that. Um, I just cut two strips or two pieces of leather. This one's uh, going to be folded over like this so I can get it all in the frame of the camera and show you. And I just make it so that there's uh, some play at the end here because that's all going to be trimmed off. And I want the top of the knife just above the top of the belt loop. This part will be the belt loop. It's a whole lot easier than, for me anyway, uh, than measuring, doing a lot of measuring beforehand. And then this piece is going to go over top of it like this. So the way I start is I take this piece, the smaller piece, and I make sure I orient the knife the way I want it. This is going to be worn on the right side, so if you can picture the blade inside here, it will be on the right side of the body. And then I've already traced this. I just trace out the blade. And I also put two little tick marks or lines up here just for a reference so you can see where the edge of the blade was. And you'll see where that comes in handy in a little bit. And then what I do is I just lightly, I don't want to cut all the way through the leather, just lightly score the leather, make a cut in it. And it just give, gives me a place for uh, um, an edge or a border on that leather, especially when you squeeze it, you can see it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some of that leather. I'm going to make the leather thinner in this area. As when we're all done, we're going to dampen the leather, and then we're going to stretch it out. We're doing, it's not real. I wouldn't go so far as to say wet forming, but I mean, guess technically it is. And I just want that area where the knife is sitting to be pushed out a little bit. And it's easier to do when there's a little void there, and the leather's thinner. Also, the void's important because that's where you want the knife to ride, not on the outside of your stick. After I've scored it, I use a tool like this. You can use anything, anything that'll cut it for you, a paring knife even. But this has got a little razor blade in it. It's uh, curved, as you can see. And it just makes it kind of easy to, or easier, to remove leather. You can just slide it along like this. This one's rather old and used. So I found that if you squeeze it and start at that slice that you made, you can get a good piece started. Watch your thumbs. Anything sharp, obviously. Just get a good start all the way around. Okay, after I get a little bit of leather removed, it's just made a little bit thinner. You can actually feel it pretty easily when you're working it with your fingers here. Then I want to do the same thing to this piece of leather. I want to create a pocket. So you can see I've marked the edge here where the bottom edge of the piece of leather is going to go. And that's where these two dots that I put up here will come in handy. But first, because I don't want the um, void on, on this piece of leather to be right at the very top, I just slide this piece of leather down maybe an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch at the most. 
and then I just make two marks right where those little lines were on the sheath. And I just take it with a pen and mark it. Some people like to dye their leather before they um, do all their cutting. Is that way you ensure it's a lot easier to dye it first, but for the purposes of this, I wanted to uh, leave it raw so that you could see it a little bit easier. Just the same thing again. Trace around the knife. And as before, score it with a razor blade. All right, I've got my little void cut in both pieces of leather, this one and in this one. The next thing I want to do is I want to mark where my uh, strap is going to be. So put that piece of leather on there. Show you the scientific method would do, I do that with. Put where the knife would sit in the sheath. Figure out about where you want the strap. And I'm going to have it come through here. And when you put in the snap over here, you just got to make sure you got enough clearance between the handle and here on the leather. And I've just marked on the leather. Now I'm just going to take the razor blade knife and cut a slice in here, widen it a little bit, and then I'm going to put a hole right there, and I'll be right back. All right, I've got the uh, hole for the snap cut and the slot for the strap. Here's the strap. I like to thin the strap where it's going to sit behind the leather here. Let me show you. I use that same tool that I used to remove the leather before and this is ideally what it's for. Works very well for it. And just thin it a little bit. Make it easier to poke through the hole. Having a pair of pliers on hand make, makes it easier still. Sometimes. Of course, if you make the slot a little bit bigger, it improves your chances of getting that through fairly easy. Then I just put a hole in the leather back here. This is an old uh, hole cutter. I actually need to replace it. It doesn't line up very well with the striker, so... Uh, then I go over to my thump and stump and I'm going to install the snap. I'll show you how I do that. Welcome to my thump and stump. Now I'm going to set half of the snap. I've got the post. Just put it through the strap. And then through the hole on the sheath part. And pull that tight a little bit just to keep it out of the way. And then uh, with uh, snap kits, uh, usually the starter kits will have this. You've got your anvil. It's got a flat side and it's got a, a dish on this side. So we're going to use the flat side right now. And you've got a little tool that will help flare out that post when you put it on there. And let's position it. Set the snap on it. Hold your flaring tool in place and give it a couple of little whacks, not too hard. And that first snap. Next step, I start doing a little bit of gluing. You can see what I'm using here. I'm just using plain old contact cement. And uh, I've marked the area on the leather I want to glue up. I'm going to do the big section first. I want to glue this area and then this area and then the area in the center will be for the belt loop. So we won't glue that shut. Makes it a whole lot easier to get things on. Just apply it liberally. Just use a piece of flat stick. Works pretty well. And it's cheaper than brushes. Alright, the glue's dried enough where I can uh, make it stick. 
doesn't not have to be perfect. You're going to be trimming this up later. That's why I really enjoy making these kind of sheaths. Your measurements don't have to be exact quite yet. Any excess glue, just wipe it off. Now, I need to glue this piece on. So we're going to put glue in this area and on this area, and I'll be right back after it dries and I set it on there. You already know what that looks like. All right, I've got the, two, the top piece glued and this one, and it's not quite dry, but dry enough. All I'm going to do is set that on there. Here you want to get your fit as pretty close, or as close as you can, because remember, you've got the somewhat out areas that you want to made up. So just press that on there. Now, I let that sit for about 15 minutes before I do anything else with it. I want to press it flat, and what I use is... chunk of railroad tie. It seems to work pretty good, so I'll be back after that sets for a little and show you what we do next. Alright, I've got this glued up. Now the next thing I want to do is mark it for stitching. And I believe that stitching is one of the mo most important things that you'll see on a sheath. I mean, other than tooling and all that, I mean, you're just your basic sheath. If your stitching isn't even, then your sheath doesn't look so good. So the key is you've got to get your spacing even. Now, how do you do that? Well, you can measure with a ruler. Um, I use um, a tool called, called an overstitch wheel. And here's a piece of scrap leather to show you what it, what it does. It, this one, this particular one, comes with three different size wheels, and the, the points on it are fairly sharp. And you can just roll it on the leather. And you get you know your marks, and then I just use a drill press. You can use a hand drill. You can use something else to punch the holes. I just find the drill press fairly easy. If I take my time, then my stitching will come out even. Well, if you don't have one of these, what can you use? Well, I'll bet everybody's got one of these. Now, my wife would probably be upset if I did this to it, but if you're going to use one of these, take a file and sharpen the tines a little bit more. But you should be able to get the idea here. And when you do it, you create four holes with this, then put the, the tine of the, the first edge in that fourth hole, and then press again. And as you can see, you come out with stitching that's pretty close. Let me run right next to it. Pretty close to the spacing of that fork. It's a little bit wider, but you can be creative. If you've got a fork that won't get you in trouble, take one of the tines off and maybe bend the two end ones in if you want it a little bit closer. But you don't need fancy tools to do leather work. Sometimes it makes it easier, but you don't need real fancy tools. But I'm going to use the overstitch wheel, and now I've got a mark where I go with that. So I just put my knife again, those two lines, those two marks that I put here and here are still coming in handy. I just line it up that way and now I'm going to stitch or roll that wheel around it just outside and I use the width of this, you can see the width between the wheel and that screw, that's the width I use for it. And I want to put the first hole not right at the very edge, and you'll see why here sh shortly. Not at the very edge. And I just run the shape of the knife down one side. And down the other. So now I've marked where I want to stitch, but I do want to come up a little bit higher. So and this is why I didn't want those marks to come right to the very edge. I just put the tine or the point in that last hole that I've made and roll it over. And I'll probably come up two or three holes. Depending on how big you want your belt, you can bring it up as high as you want. I don't have a, I didn't make this super high, so I'm not going to bring it up too high. So I've got some holes there marked. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the drill press. I'm assuming everybody knows what a drill press looks like. 
and I'm going to drill out these holes and I'll be back in just a minute. Maybe two. Alright, I've got the holes drilled in the sheath. And when you're drilling on flat leather, another thing I like about this style of sheath, uh, that it's easy. When you're drilling on a flat surface, um, your holes come out fairly straight on the back. If you're making a pouch sheath or something where your leather's uneven and it sits at an angle, you have to be very, very careful because you want to hold that leather flat. It does not take much to make it look like um, less than very good. Let's just say that on the back. So now for sewing it up, I'll just show you how that fits and looks. As you can see, there's plenty of clearance for the knife to fit in there. I'm going to be using just an artificial sinew. Uh, it's flat, it's waxed. I buy it at a Tandy leather store that's here locally. Uh, I only use one needle and I'll start, I actually usually start at the bottom, but I'll, I'll go up one way and then back down. You can use two needles, you know, if you hold that in a, a stitching caddy or you can make one or buy one, you know, or in a vise, and then you can use two needles and you just make one pass, but I like doing it this way. It doesn't it's not difficult to do and uh, for the hole um, I used I believe it was a 3 or no a 732nd bit uh, check that I used a 764th bit um, I've used a little bit bigger but that seems to work pretty good um, I when I make my first pass it goes through real easy coming back on the second pass it goes through easy um, and you're just using a single strand going through Coming back the other way. Leave a little bit of a tail so you can tie it off at the end. And then just back and forth till you get it all stitched up. Won't bore you with that. I'll be back as soon as it's stitched up. Now just finishing up stitching this up. And I've run, I've started here, run up and back and up and then back. And when I'm doing this side I, I ran it through a couple of times just to give it a little extra strength where the top of the flap is. Now to finish this dog next door. To finish this I just run it through a couple of extra times to make sure those holes are real tight where the threads are coming up and then to finish it you don't need to tie a knot you just cut it off and you're done uh, with the wax string. If you're not using wax string, a knot would probably be a good idea. But let me show you what the next step is. Because right now, we've got a functional sheath, but it's pretty ugly. Let's see if we can pretty it up a little bit. The next step I use, and, and if you don't have a belt sander or a grinder, I mean you can use other tools to do it. You can hand sand it to even things up, or they have burnishing tools to smooth that leather out. Um, but I use this because I've got it. Um, it's a two by seventy-two belt. I've got a worn-out fifty grit belt on it right now, and I'm going to smooth out the ends, and it'll kind of burn it here and seal those ends and make everything a little bit more even. Alright, I want to clean up the edges here, and here's the tool I use to do that. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called, probably an edger. They do make different sizes. I just grabbed one off the shelf that seems to work. And uh, what you do is you just put it on the edge and slice off the excess. a nice clean appearance on the sheath. Alright, now for the next step. Uh, we're going to make the knife 
fit into the pouch. Right now it does not, so I'll show you how I do that in a minute. All right, what I've done is I've wrapped the uh, knife in a cellophane or saran wrap um, just to keep it from getting wet and rusting because it's going to sit in there. This is going to be wet and it's going to sit in there for a while. You know, you can dunk the whole sheath in, in a bucket of water if you want. Uh, it just takes longer to dry if you do. Uh, I just get it started, make a little space there. And then all I do is pour a little water inside it. And let's see if we've got that wet enough to do this. You slide it in there, it's going to be a very tight fit. And this is another reason you don't sharpen the knife before you do all this. You get it in there. And you let it sit. Now, let me show you what that's going to look like. Again, it's very tight right now. You're going to end up with a cavity like that. So you've got a cavity for your knife to go in, and your stitching is outside that cavity. So just like with a welt, you won't cut your stitching when you put your knife, your sharpened knife, in your sheath. Well, the sheath is dried up overnight. Um, you can see the uh, cavity is pretty well defined here, and the knife does slide in relatively easy. Because I do want, I don't want this much extra leather hanging out, but I want enough so it's easy to grab while you're wearing it. So right about here, and just trim this off. So that when I dye it, I actually dye the end as well. Let's go ahead and dye it. Um, there's a lot of different dyes on the market. I prefer the Fibings uh, leather dye. I just like the color. It holds better. Uh, EcoFlow is another popular brand of dye. It's a water-based dye, and I don't think the colors come out as vibrant, but I'm pretty new at this. I'm going to take some uh, leather classes and... Uh, They'll probably teach me how to use it properly, and I may change my opinion. So I'm going to dye this sheath black, and all I do is, this bottle's fairly full, I can probably stick my swab in the top, and then just lay on the dye. Now, if you've dyed the sheath, before you did the cutting and gluing, you don't have to worry about getting it in all the nooks and crannies that are here. You can see I've got some dye on that snap, but that'll come off. If it's a concern, for me it's not a concern. I want this to be a good solid black. Something else that I've done on the sheath before I turn the camera on is I just put my maker's mark on the back of the sheath with some stamps. Now there is a product you can use called Edge Coat for doing the edges here. And you can see that I've just used the dye as I went. And uh, it's for color coating leather edges. Um, it's a pretty durable product, but I've found that this works fairly well doing it this way as well. So After you've got the uh, leather on, and before it dries completely, um, and I like to seal the leather. Um, it, it gives it a little water-resistant properties. Um, the products I use, there's two different ones. I mean, they're both the same pretty much, but one is made by EcoFlow. Um, it's a, an acrylic finish. This is just a clear gloss and, gloss, and the other one is Leather Sheen. Um, uh, made by the Fibings. Again, two of the popular brands here, so... Um, the way I use this, I know people that just pour it in a bucket and they dunk the sheath in there. I don't prefer to do it that way. I just coat a rag with it, 
and while the leather is still a little damp from the dye, just rub it on there. Get it all over. Then I'll let that dry for a few minutes and then put on a second coat and then the last thing I'm going to do for the sheath is to add that other snap and I'll be back and show you when that's all done see what it looks like. Alright, I've got the uh, strap trimmed a little bit and the second snap or second half of the snap uh, set. Um, I didn't show you and, um, but that little anvil, remember I said it had a flat side and then it had a little impression here, a dish. Well, that fits the dish part of it. Fits into the snap like that. And you set it exactly the same way as we did the first half on there. And then, knife fits in there. Nice and secure. And that's how I make a no-welt sheath. Hope that was helpful for you for this style of sheath. And thanks for watching.